Hey guys and welcome to my channel where I speak about my experience as a data scientist, especially this year, 2022, when I ventured the market again and discovered just how insanely crazy it is. And I wanted to share with you all of my findings, all of my fails, all of the emotions and feelings that I had. And one of that emotion was just wanting to quit. The first reason why I wanted to quit data science is that I felt like I could not keep up with the demands, the learning demands of this career anymore. I felt like it was too much. So before I had my son, I used to use some of my free time to learn new algorithms, new things. I used to go to a lot of meetups as well um, after work and I would learn stuff that I can take back to my workplace, colleagues and like try out new ideas, especially because I was a technical lead. Being a technical lead means that you are sort of setting the technical direction of data science products. So it was really part of my job to keep up to date with this stuff. But I felt overwhelmed in this new phase of my life to fit that in. The free time I had, I really just wanted to spend it with my son, spend it with my family. And I think that's really how it should be. Um, we shouldn't be spending our free time trying to be better employees. But in data science, I kind of feel like it requires you to just do that extra because of the culture that is there. And I think this culture is really perpetuated by the community. We need to get to that point of realizing that it's really not conducive to a full balanced lifestyle. Data science is a job. It's not your lifestyle. Another reason why I wanted to quit data science is that interviewing for data science jobs just sucks. It's like long, hard interviews. You are being judged by a group of men, especially when it's just all white men. It's even much more miserable. You start to feel very inadequate. You start to feel like you don't belong. You start to feel like this is not for you. Even the women that you meet in this field or the women that I meet in this field are much younger than me. There are women that are just coming from grad school. There's not a lot of mothers, women of color trying to find like senior positions out there I was only interviewed by men like when it came to like senior positions only like once was I really interviewed by a woman that was very senior it really hurts my feelings when I bring this up on the internet because I get a lot of dismissive attitudes especially here in Europe they always think that it is so diverse here um, Amsterdam is such a multicultural city blah 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 but my real world experience trying to find a job in this market, interviewing for like 16 top companies or even like just average companies in the Netherlands, like 99% of my interview panels were like all men. Um, and these were like senior people. So every time I was engaging with senior people for senior positions, the people who interviewed me were not reflective of the world that we live in. It was all just men. And I guess like interviewing for me just became much more harder and demotivating because I hardly saw anybody that looked like me. There was like zero. Yeah. Third thing that made me want to create data science is that coding for corporate sucks. Coding is not as glamorous as people on the internet make it out to be. So every project goes into maintenance mode. And when something is in maintenance mode, you start to get requests from business that is just like, fix this, fix that, do this, do that. And when you're just stuck fixing stuff in production, innovation really dies and you also die along with it on the inside. When it comes to maintaining models in terms of model drift and like maintaining like accuracy of a forecasting algorithm, I'm not talking about that type of maintenance. I'm talking more about like, oh, the screen is taking too long to load. Oh, this button does not look right. Oh, this visualization. Can we just make it like a little bit wider? Like, you know, like that type of annoying maintenance. Let's go to the next reason, which is reason number four is that I do not have the drive to build or learn about state of the art data science algorithms anymore, which was something that really drove my passion in this field, like learning about all these cool technologies that were out there. And the reason why my passion died is that 
I know that building this stuff in the real world is not very practical. Like there's not a lot of real world applications that can leverage off these state of the art algorithms. Many companies really want very simple stuff, quick, easy algorithms that can be deployed. And that stuff really adds value. We only go for complexity when the simple stuff doesn't work. And that's, that's just how the real world is. It's also the simple stuff that's easy to communicate to stakeholders um, than the complex black box solutions. And if you really want to do like this type of complex data science, you have to kind of venture into PhD territory and you have to like do a lot of work. And I don't think it's a priority for me at the moment. I don't think like I want to use a lot of my energy there anymore. Knowing that there is very little possibility that I will be creating state of the art algorithms in my nine to five demotivated me. The fifth one is too much effort to progress in this career. So in Amsterdam, the market is very competitive. There is a lot of work you need to do in order to move from like senior data scientist to data science lead to data science manager. When I was interviewing, the processes for getting like a data science lead, a data science manager job was just too intense. In addition to that, because I moved from industrial engineering to data science, have a little bit of context on what it meant for me to progress as an industrial engineer. It didn't take much. I would just show up at interviews and get the job. There was no like lead code culture industry. There was no like studying for interviews. It was all just based on your experience and what you're doing. That's it. Whereas with data science, it's so different. You have to study for interviews. You have to do a lot more. You have to know programming. You have to know business cases. You have to know like people skills. You have to know um, non-people skills. Like you, you have to know everything. That to me is frustrating. Like having to learn how to scope down data science is something I feel like the industry needs to start doing better. Knowing that I can really just go back to industrial engineering and get a job that's going to pay me pretty much the same as this one. So what's the point of putting so much effort in this career path? The last point is that the high salaries of non-technical tech jobs is actually tempting. You also see like other positions like project manager positions, product manager positions in the tech space that are earning good money, like similar money to senior data scientists. And then you're wondering like, why am I putting myself through this? I should just become a PM because a PM job seems easier because it's not technically demanding. Well, that's what it appears to be, but it's probably not. It probably has other th elements in it that makes it more challenging that would be just as frustrating as data science. So that is it for this video and yeah, I am done. And it wasn't meant to be negative. It was kind of just to say that I also face my frustrations. I also have those moments where I wanna give up and quit, but I have a good foundation as to why I wanted to become a data scientist and that's why I keep on going. I also have great friends in this field, great career coaches that are helping me navigate this field a little bit better. And I'm gonna end this video with a quote by Miley Cyrus that says, there's always gonna be another mountain. I'm always gonna have to make it move meaning that you're always going to have career highs and you're going to have career lows and it's just part of life and i wanted to share you some of my career lows because we're always sharing the highs and i think like sharing the lows sometimes make people understand that they're not alone we need to also talk about the journey and not just the destination all the time the journey itself is really what builds character and it is really what's going to help us like take on whatever challenges life decides to throw at us so that is it for this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have enjoyed this content and give this video a like. Bye-bye.